Let's try this out. Flame cloak. Oh god. That's not good. 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 That looked painful. Are you okay? Um. This article was right about the fact that it was potent. Um. There's only one problem. It exploded right in my face. Which is not something that I'm interested no. in. Yep. Uh. Might be wise to move a little bit back. A tiny bit. It seemed to explode right in my face. Anyway, um, might be that I just misused the spell. We'll have to see. What about this door? Yeah, completely locked. And we're looking for more undead. And there are none here. So how about down here? If there's one undead, there must be more. Yeah. Real that that kind of stuff is just creepy. Oh dear. Um Inigo? Oh, this is just there. Uh, don't fall down, okay? Don't fall down. Let's see. Okay. We have a staircase up and a staircase... Well, not a staircase, a hallway down. Let's do the upper one first. Which goes down again. Okay. Undead. Let's see. Where are they? There they are! <laughs> Boo! Okay. Interesting. It still explodes. The whole exploding thing is still not good. Oh, I tripped. Never mind. Um. Oh god! In you go. Ready your weapon. Here we go. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. This spell. Ow. Sorry. Jizarko definitely needs to work on this spell. If it. Sure. If it's potent, perfect. But don't let it explode. Enemies in a fiery explosion. Also, what the heck is this? That is a Daedric symbol. Um. Yeah. Let's not mess around with that, shall we? Got a key and midden incident reports. The missing students were found in the midden this morning, dead as expected. None of us bothered to keeping a detect life charm for the search at this point. Bodies were found together, each suffering the same deformities, peeled and bubbling skin on the arms and face. Conjurous burns, as it's commonly referred to around the college. There's little doubt they were attempting a summoning ritual well beyond their capabilities. The relic nearby put any doubt in this theory to test. I admit that I've never seen one like it. A large segmented sculpture of a gauntlet, a daedric sigil embla emblazoned upon the palm. Attempts to move it were in vain. I must show it to Archmage Sethoth during his upcoming visit. Perhaps he will know more. While we couldn't move the relic, I was able to pry four rings from it. I'm sure there's a connection between them and the ritual the students were attempting. I'll store these in the Arcadium until we can consult with a Conjuration Master to learn more. You know, I'll take that with me, it might be useful. But they were... busy... with... rituals. Very interesting. But what? The whole 
Daedric stuff makes me slightly scared. Yeah, the midden surely is a dark place. And we're back to some icy depths, so I'm going to keep my firebolt ready. Also, maybe that new magic spell. Where is it? Oh, I didn't learn it. Books, spells, rift bolt. Ah, it could be interesting. That deals less damage than a lightning bolt, but it teleports the target backwards, which might be useful. Could be fun to try out. Oh, rift bolt. Don't know if there are more undead here, but if so, they are gonna get blasted. Bloody spiderwebs! Oh, in you go, spider. If you do not mind, I will take care of this one, my friend. Go, oh, yep, go ahead. In you go, come on. Yeah. go away. Where's the second one? Oh, it's there. It is. That there you go. Is that? Well, it certainly is potent, but. I don't fully understand how this spell works. I mean, sure, you blast an enemy with it. But I didn't get to experience fully as to how it works. Well, one thing for sure, in you go. I have no idea where exactly we are. But let's hope this won't end in disaster. At least there won't be any dragons here. Oh, that's the. Okay, that's the bridge we were on upon not too long ago. Then, what is down here? Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. I can hear the sea. Yeah, we won't be able to get up here again, but... Uh. Ah. So. We have a quick and secret... Well, quick, not really quick, but... We have a secret way out of the college. Which is right above us. Ah. Uh. In you go. You scared? Sure, I'll help you. Let's see. Here we go. You summoned me? Yeah, if you don't want to jump, I'm taking you down here. <laughs> see, there's a way of helping you. Yeah, this is really a one-way trip. I smell magic. Uh, that might be from my palm. So... Oh, dear. Well, that is indeed the runes of Winterhold down here. Ugh. Okay, if we just take it slow. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, stop making me laugh like that. Anyway, we need to find a way back up. Because we're not gonna go through the college again. Um, yeah, the water might be freezing, but this is the closest we can get to a way across. Don't feel like jumping all the way over ice blocks. It doesn't seem like the safest way. Ah, here's a path up. Um. Ow. Yeah, that looks painful. Why did you die? He died because of the bear trap. 
What about you? Hmm. Giant stoke low dust. Money Marco, the King of Worms. Oh, sacred owls are tame. A rosy light infused air. Oh, a thousand through flowers. Gentle breezes flow. Yeah, I'll take this along with me. For later. And I'll take some glow dust. I'll leave those two behind because I don't know if they will still be very fresh. We're friendly. We don't want to hurt you. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt you. We're friendly. Very friendly. Right, in you go. We have someone wanting no. attention. Yeah, he is not. Nope. Wrong spell. Ah. You are dead. I should keep the right spells ready. Ah. I didn't want to kill him. That's a problem with wild dogs. You never know when they turn aggressive. Wolves on the other hand. I was not summoning you. Oi, get back. Okay, the whole teleporting away does not seem to be of great effect. Um, what have we got here? Um... Give me a moment, in you go. I see some sigils that do not want to be removed oh, willingly. There we go. What have we got here? A staff of ice spikes. Hmm. Frost salts. Very strange dagger. Pretty beautiful looking. What is this? Money Marco, King of Worms. I don't know what has been going on here. But whatever it is, it's not good. What about this dagger? Where is it? Uh, no, not that one. This thing. Certainly looks beautiful. Hmm. I'm going to take it. I don't like the whole ritual things. They just creep me out. They are a sign of badness. Ready to unfold. Anyway, it's getting pretty late, so... Hey! Another one of those things. But what are they? That's my question. What are these ruins? This is not part of Winterhold. Definitely not. Hmm. Once we're in the western part of Skyrim, then maybe we can see if we can find the location of that guy but we're talking about the second era or the third that's a long time ago anyway let's go to the inn get some rest get a bit of warmth and then we can go back to the college Um, in you go. I did not cast your spell, did I? <laughs> Maybe you have some slight control over it yourself, which is perfectly fine by me. It means I don't have to use it that often. And you'll manage to find me. So the frozen heart. Let's go for a drink, buddy. Let's go for a drink. Could you describe the smell? 
like some horrible monster was turned ah, nice and busy and then exploded what did you do it was a minor miscalculation I've already corrected it for future experiments this this is why people have a problem with your college Nelikar. <laughs> welcome let me know if you want anything oh yeah I, think um, I got a clean mug around here somewhere yeah greetings if there's anything you need just let me know yeah uh, what have you got for sale? Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. Well, we'd like two ale, please. Thanks. See ya. Just say the word if you need a drink oh. or something to eat. Can you go? What is on your mind? Go ahead, ask away. Want to, uh, you want to relax it for a bit? Good idea. You should take a break too. You deserve it. Yeah, we definitely do. Also, um, in you go, in you go, in you go, in you go. Yes, my friend. Um, I need to trade some things for you. Anything new? Yes. I've got some ale for you. Here you go. Also, I still have an apple pie and some good beef for you. Enjoy. You know where I am. Do not forget about me, please. Nah, I wouldn't forget about you. <laughs> so... Um, sir, no, you are not the person I was looking for. Um, where did Inigo go? I thought he went over here. Oh, ah, there you are. Well, I'm not gonna find it now, so. Well, hey, Inigo, do maybe talk to you for a bit? My friend, do you mind if I ask you something? No problem at all. Okay. Langley is a very interesting man. He knows a lot about me, and there is a great deal of evidence that his visions usually come to pass. All that said, we have only just met him. In your heart of hearts, do you think we can trust him? That's quite a question I don't know he seems very honest I mean if it is true that he indeed spent years finding you and everything then I honestly believe he is trying to do good I feel the same way he has many flaws but who doesn't even though we have just met he has been a part of my life for years he is a good man. Hearing your opinion has eased my mind. Thank you, my friend. Ah, there no problem. There is something else I am compelled to mention. Uh, what else? When you were outside getting those eggs, I told Langley about how you spared my life and my debt to you. He questioned my memory. Uh, you what? He said my mind has been through a lot with this skooma, the grief, and the endless battles and so on. He suggested that maybe you are not the person I remember. That's ridiculous! Please come home. Just, Real, just come in the home. beginning I might not have recognized you, but the more I've been thinking about it, I remember what I said to you at High Rothgar. I really believe my dad is behind quite some stuff and the reason for why we left the North Point. We have a past together. Just. I just don't remember too much of it. I know, that is what I told him. You are my friend to the end. Langley may know a lot, but he does not know everything. And there you are right. He is just jealous of our friendship. Pay and that too. Mind. Anyway, that is all I wanted to say. Let us talk of other things. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, I want to talk to you about our past and your debt to me. Because it seems to be very heavy on your mind. Okay, say what you must. Well, you shot me in the head and left me for dead. Yes, sometimes I cannot even look you in the eye, my friend. The more I grow to know you, the more ashamed I feel. But you shouldn't. You were not yourself. Okay? You were on Skuma. Skuma is a bad thing. You were not yourself. You hear me? 
That is true, but it is not the whole truth. I was lost and my mind was clouded, but I have to take responsibility for my actions. Yes. I am so sorry for what I did, my friend. I wish there was some way of turning back time, so I could alter the past. I owe you a lot. I am grateful you have given me the opportunity to earn your forgiveness. In the end, I hope our friendship and future adventures will prove more important than how we met. We are a fantastic team, you and I. Yeah, we've seen that. But... About the whole dead thing, Inigo. I forgive you. I really, really do. You are very kind. It is a beautiful gesture. But my debt to you stands. I have not come near to earning your forgiveness yet. R really? You, you might have shot me in the head. I might have gone to North Point because of that. Also, I lost my memory because of my father and his tinkering with magic for other people and everything that caused me to lose the most part of the memory. But I forgive you. End of story. We're together now. At last. I wish it were that simple. Alas, it is not. I am happy you have come to peace with our past, but I cannot say the same for myself. I will know when I am ready to move on, but for now, the guilt I bear still weighs down my heart. Maybe that guilt will be there for the rest of my life. I have a feeling that I am the only one who can let it go. Then try and let it go, my friend. Just let it go. Let it go. You calling me friend means the world to me. I am honored. You have given me a reason to go on. A whole new life. A chance at happiness. If all goes well, maybe one day I will be at peace with who I am. If that happens, it will be because of you also. You cannot remove my guilt, but you have given me hope. I must do the rest. And I'll be beside you if you need my help, okay? I totally understand. I totally, totally understand what you've been going through. I've always had a nick with people, so yes. You are more understanding than most, my friend. Yeah, that's Your what my dad said. Lighten my soul, but as far as my heart is concerned, I still have much to repay. Well, I think you're on the right road, Inigo. Look at what we've done together. We've already done a lot. Maybe you are right. Since we started traveling together, I have felt a shift in the balance of my life. You know, we have had a few adventures, my friend. But I will never forget one particular fight. We were in a dank, spooky crypt, and it was the first time I had come face to face with the undead since I received my scars. I had been in my cell for quite a while, and it was more excitement than I was used to. <laughs> As we fought side by side, I became aware that a new positive force was at work in my life. Despite the smell, fear, and general sense of unease, I knew that I would always remember that moment fondly. Yeah. We were magnificent together. Uh -huh. When the battle was done and we stood victorious, I knew I was walking a better path. Thank you for helping me unlock my potential and for giving my heart and soul a second chance. Always, Inigo. Always. <laughs> oh, yes. I still remember that crypt very well. Where was it again? We were on our way from Windhelm. Forsaken ca no, not the Forsaken Cave. Silver Drift Lair. That's where it was. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Silver Drift Lair. We found some bandits. And we then found quite a lot of Draugr and skeletons. <laughs> so. 
Let me see. Inigo gave me those books. Da Vinci's journal. Journal of his father. Entry one. That's it. And it's done. Lee and I are retired. No more contracts. No more blades in the dark. And no more sneaking about. Leah says I'll soon grow tired of a normal life, but I'm not sure. I think I've seen all the death I care to. Now it's time to settle down, spend some time, and spend, uh, spend some of the gold we've saved. So, meet the new us. Just an honest couple doing honest work. Ah, oh. Those were Inigo's mom and dad. Entry 2. We've just bought a house in Riverhold. Life is good here. It's peaceful enough and quite pretty in its own way. Most of the locals are pleasant and far more accepting than we were expecting. It's a very cosmopolitan place with all the border trading that goes on. No one seems to mind the idea of Nargonian and Gajid living together. Our new home is next door to the town's orphanage and Leah keeps bringing it up in conversations. She wants a family. I'll be honest. The idea terrifies me. Is it possible that a couple of trained assassins like us could be good parents? I don't know. Entry 3 I'm working a local mine and Lee I just got a job at the orphanage. We went there yesterday. I think I'm going to be a father. We saw two little Gashid boys that melted our hearts. They are supposedly twins, but one is golden and the other is an unusual shade of blue. Seeing Leah with the boys, I don't know, it just felt right. We discussed adopting them all night. She said that if it was only down to her, she'd go and collect them now. I told Leah I had to think about it, but I'm fairly sure my mind is made up. She is going to be an amazing mother. I love her more than my words can say and can deny her nothing. I lock all our weapons in the basement and get to work on making the spare room baby proof. Ah, oh, so that is Leah and Indigo and Fergus. Oh god. We are now proud parents. We've named the boys Fergus and Indigo after our favorite former guildmates. The woman at the orphanage told us the little she knew of their past. A soldier found Indigo and Fergus in an abandoned shack about 50 miles from here. He heard them crying as they took shelter and discovered the boys wrapped in linen rags, all hidden in a pile of straw. The boys had a letter tucked between them. It was from their birth mother. We were shown the letter, but it was ragged and torn, so I asked if I could make a copy for posterity. It reads, Atala hopes you have found her children safe. They are twins, born only minutes apart. Though as you can see they are unalike. What had been a pleasant day began to darken at the time of their birth. And I heard much wailing and commotion outside my tent. My first son came then. But by the time his little brother entered the world, the sky outside was like night. I held him in my arms and it was as if their cries brought back the sun. For then the darkness lifted and the voices outside rejoiced. I smiled and wondered if a third moon had appeared during my labor, as such a thing is said to signal the arrival of a main. Wishful Atala, stupid Atala, cursed Atala, there had been no third moon, only darkness. A few weeks later, my youngest sprouted his first blue hair and his fate was decided. It has been nearly 200 years since the last bad moon omen. But upon seeing that tiny blue strand, our elder recognized its meaning. The village would suffer greatly unless my baby was put to death. Alas, Atala could not allow it. I can no longer trust the father of my children. The moons hold greater sway over his heart than we do. Our situation fills him with great sadness, but he is elder born and wishes to appease Masser and Secunda above all else. The night before the sacrifice, I heard a woman's voice speak, though no woman could be seen. The voice was fair but commanding. It said, Run, Atala, the way is clear. Take your babies and flee. I bundled up my little ones and snuck away into the desert. I have traveled many miles, but my people are tracking us and they grow close. They will have blood one way or another. 
I would rather it were mine. Earlier, the woman's voice spoke up again inside my head. She said I must go now and draw our pursuers away from this place. She said my children will be found here by one who can help them. Strange as it sounds, I believe her. Please take my darlings to safety, and when they are old enough to understand, tell them that Atala loves them still. Leah says that she has never heard of such a barbarically pious tribe in her homeland, but the existence of such people does not surprise her. There are stories of forgotten settlements that still thrive in isolation among the shifting sands. Atala must have healed from such a place. Her plan worked, and now her boys are safe and loved. Lee and I will do our utmost to give them the best of everything. When they are old enough, I will tell the boys about their mother and what she endured to save their lives. It is a sad tale, and I am not sure if we will ever tell them absolutely everything. That is a worry for another day. Here and now, they are happy, and they make us happy. Long may it last. Leah and I just back are just back from a job. I know, I know, we're tired, but it was a good flex to the old muscles again, and it was only a group of outlaws. The thugs had been terrorizing a village a few miles away, so we waited until dark, left the boys at the orphanage with one of Leah's co-workers, tooled up and took care of business. By the hiss it felt good. I must admit my armor is getting a little snug, but it seems Leah and I are as good as a team as ever. I love her so much. When we returned to the orphanage, Leela's friends led us to the basement where Inigo and Fergus were chasing spiders. They looked so adorable, I had to draw them. Bah! <laughs> Inigo! God! God, you're cute! <laughs> oh. I've never actually seen a baby Khajiit. God. They are cute. And I can see where Inigo gets the fun out of killing spiders. Entry 6. We've decided to teach the boys how to handle themselves. I'm sure many would say they are too young for weapons, but it's a harsh world out there. And we both agree they'll be better off with a little training. Inigo instantly took a shine to archery, while Fergus seems to favor the sword. They both show great aptitude, even at such a young age. I'm a very proud father. Fergus is already turning into a determined and thoughtful boy. Inigo has amazing reflexes and a sense of the absurd that often has the rest of us laughing, even when we shouldn't be. Most importantly, the brothers are fiercely loyal. They often fight and squabble, but at the slightest hint of danger, they unflinchingly stand up for one another. When I'm down the mine, the boys spent most of their days at the orphanage with Leah. It's sad, but I, you could say that they never really left. Ah, well, I see no harm and they often cheer up the other children. In they go. The, oh, you sh... Yeah, you got along perfectly fine, but Inigo laughing at shooting your brother in the foot is not a good idea, and yes, you can expect your bow to be broken in that case. Ah, <laughs> uh, little kids. Entry 7. Poor Inigo had a bit of trouble at the market today. Some local boys and girls were making fun of him because of his blue fur. Little hooligans! If he'd had his bow with him, I think he would have thought on a thing or two. If Fergus had been there, Things could have gotten ugly. We don't want either of the boys seriously hurting anyone, so Leah showed them a few hand-to-hand -hand tricks, just in case things get rough. Oh, so that is where Inigo learned the whole rock in a glove thing. Hmm. We adults often forget what a battleground childhood can be. I spoke to the parents of the boy who instigated the bullying. The father said his son wasn't responsible and called me a filthy lizard. Maybe this town isn't as open-minded as we first thought. Entry 8 Leah discovered Fergus and Inigo playing with our most precious weapons today. I have no idea how they got the display cases open. Luckily, Inigo is still too weak to draw lightning and thunder is too heavy for them to wield. Can you imagine if either had discharged in the house? We locked the weapons away in a safer place. We have to keep an eye on those boys. 
sadness and excitement today. Riverhold lost three people to a large group of migrating giant spiders. Leah and I knew we were the only ones capable of helping, so we strapped on our weapons and exterminated the beasts. To be honest, the boys did most of the work. They were eager to test their weapons on live targets, and I must say, they did fantastically well. As the villagers hid in their homes, Leah and I dispatched about 10 of the beasts, then watched as Inigo and Fergus took care of the rest. They fought efficiently and with great seal. Fergus became a quiet whirlwind of deadly steel as Inigo expertly loosed a storm of arrows and insults. That boy would choke on the gallows. They are young men now, and they are already talking about leaving Rivel to seek their fortune. I would rather my children saw the more sedentary occupation, but they clearly wish to use their skills to help others who are less able. I'm confident that as long as they have each other, they will be safe. Ah, <sighs> go. You really were a spider slayer. Entry 10. Our little boys are now men. It feels like only yesterday they were just fuzzy little bundles. Leah and I have agreed to let them travel the lands in search of their fortune. They leave behind two extremely proud parents. We are gifting them our most prized weapons. Inigo will take lightning, Leah's bow, and Fergus will take thunder, my sword. May they protect our children and strike fear into the hearts of all who oppose them. Lightning and thunder. I better stop writing and help them pack. Dearest Fergus and Inigo, come back safe and happy. I miss you already. Entry 11. They are gone. Our boys, our sons, our greatest achievements. Leah and I are already growing restless, rattling around this empty house. Everything is the same. But everything has changed. They will return in a few years and I cannot wait to see the men they will surely have become. But until that day, we'll keep the fire stoked and their rooms ready. Entry 12. A courier brought us news from the boys today. It's been over a year since they last sent word. They are well and happy. They say they have had many adventures and are now heading to Cyrodiil. They have caught the traveling bug and want to see as much of Tamriel as they can before coming home. I'm so glad they are alright. The latter has put us in a fantastic mood. Leah and I went to the inn and had a few drinks. We spent most of the night toasting our boys repeatedly. They are happy, they are safe and they are together. All is well. Entry 13 we haven't heard from Inigo and Fergus in a long time, but I'm sure they are okay. There is a lot of world out there to explore. Let them have their fill of it before returning. They are not the only ones who feel the call of the road. Leah and I are grown tired of our inactive lifestyle. Perhaps we can go on a little trip of our own. Something with a bit of risk and adventure. It's been far too long. Entry 14 Avenger has found us. I can't wait to hit the road again. A trading caravan passed through town today and they were looking for guards. It's perfect. A bit of travel, a bit of adventure, and who knows, we may even bump into Fergus and Inigo. We join the group tomorrow. Leah is choosing her armor at the moment. I think we should each take a light and heavy set. Sounds like we could be passing through bandit territory. Nothing we can't handle, I'm sure. Leah is calling me. I had better get my things together. Ah, Da Vinci and Leah. <laughs> oh god. That's where it ends. But that is when their parents died. God. So sorry, Nico. So sorry. <laughs> 